Okay, so just a quick show note here. This episode was recorded before the pandemic began, and I never actually got around to posting it. But as it turns out, with social distancing and lockdowns abounding, the film studios have decided to send this one to digital streaming platforms early as well. So it'll come out on March 31st. So this will be a straightforward episode of Leaving the Theater, where you'll hear me and my guest actually doing just that. But then you'll be able to rent and stream this one in the safety of your home. Stay home. Spoiler alert, this is a great family film for folks quarantined with children. Beloved video game character Sonic the Hedgehog finally gets his motion picture debut, and it was not an easy road. The film was originally scheduled to be released November 2019, but was delayed by three months after the release of the trailer was not well received. The visual effects, and specifically Sonic's design, were mercilessly mocked by fans and critics alike. Sonic got a makeover to the tune of $5 million added to the original budget, and the release date was pushed to February 2020. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and this is Leaving the Theater. This is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing Sonic the Hedgehog with special guest Curtis Majors. Nice. You're going full name now. I love it. Sonic the Hedgehog, director Jeff Fowler, writers Pat Casey and Josh Miller, starring James Marsden, Ben Schwartz as Sonic, Tika Sumter, and Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. Uh, This movie was released after a bit of controversy uh, when the first trailer came out. I, I think it was the first time I've ever seen anything like this. I don't know about you, but uh, it was it caught so much heat that they actually went back and redid Sonic because no one liked the way he was uh, rendered in animation. So they went back, made him look a little more cartoony, uh, kind of fixed up those portions of the movie. Um, I liked, well, let's let's go piece by piece. I liked the way it ended up looking like I thought it looked more like Sonic uh, from what I could see in the movie. What did you think, Curtis? Uh, it was OK. It was a little slow start. But the more I got into it, the more it made me feel like being a kid again, which made me open up and be more receptive to it. Gotcha. But specifically about the animation. Oh, the animation. Uh, yeah, the animation was much better than the controversy when it came out uh, earlier. I mean, the band had teeth and like separated eyes like it was. It was all it was messed really up. Bad. Yeah, it was all messed up. Uh, in terms of the movie, I I had a feeling when it first started, I was like, okay, so they're doing a fish out of water story. Then it's a chase movie. Then it's a buddy movie. Yeah. So there's a lot of things they were throwing in there. Some things felt pretty tropey, um, especially when they did the they do the thing with the music where they <laughs> they're like they make it real soft and make you realize yeah. that Sonic is making friends that type of thing. Uh, I, I wasn't really there for those portions of the movie. The portions of the movie I liked the best was when, one, whenever Dr. Robotnik came on, when Jim Carrey oh, showed Jim up, Carrey I was like, okay, this is great. <laughs> this is about, I'm all in. You could do this all day. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, no, Jim Carrey stole the movie for me. He was hilarious. He definitely embodied the role of uh, Eggman, Dr. Robotnik, whatever you called him growing up playing the game. So he did a really good job. Yeah, I agree. I. Uh, I was sitting there and I was like, the nostalgia wasn't just there for, because you saw the parts where they opened up showing that main world of Sonic that we all played. So that's, you get the nostalgia of that. You get the nostalgia when you see Sonic, when he's running, when you look at his shoes and you're like, those aren't the right shoes. And you know the, new, you know the shoes are coming. coming yeah. So by like just watching, seeing the rings, all of that. But when Jim Carrey shows up, man, it's just like the movie goes, he, he takes it to a different level. Yeah. And I was like, I think, 
I, I don't know if this movie would have been as good if they miscast this role or if it hadn't been Jim Carrey. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if Jim Carrey wasn't in it, it probably wouldn't have been as good as you as it was, like you yeah. said. Yeah. But he kind of saved the movie for me. Yeah. Uh, like you said, Sonic, the best parts for me was when he was being Sonic, like running, yes. the chase, yes. the slowing down because yes. he sees everything yes. faster. So it shows you how fast he moves by slowing everyone else down. Yeah. Like that was the Sonic world to me. But like you said, it wasn't the video gameplay. They did a good job moving the story along. As it went on, like I said, it got better for me. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of hard to tell. I want to see yeah. where it goes. Yeah. I, I'm into it, but it wasn't as good as I expected it to be. Yeah, and you expected, like you're right, I think you said a lot of what I, what I was going to say is that uh, the best parts was when, was when he was running. Yeah. Like, when... I didn't care about his interaction with the town that much, his friendships, all that stuff. It's when he was running around being Sonic. Yeah. And then specifically, they did something. They took this from the, uh, they, well, and I'm sure they took it from any movie where somebody's fast. But specifically, most recently, in Days of Future Past, Quicksilver, I don't know if you remember that scene, when he's saving the mutants that are in the yeah. fire, and they slow everything down yeah. and have him run. Yeah. So to me, that I love those parts in every movie that Quicksilver's yeah. in. I'm like, you can do a whole movie of just doing that yeah. and then speed it up and see what happens. And they do that twice in this movie, which I thought was fantastic. Yes. Um, and then at the end, when you got him running and dodging and all that stuff, I'm like, yeah, I want to, this is all I wanted to see. I don't care about, like, as a matter of fact, I think they could have, like, I think they could have taken a page out of Fast and the Furious book and just been like, don't worry about the plot. Don't worry about the plot, <laughs> you know? This is definitely one of the movies where it was too much plot. It, yeah. did, it didn't need it for this. It's like a Sonic the Hedgehog is a video game. He runs yeah. fast. Just show the graph. You got the graphics to pull off a great movie. Just, yeah. just do it. And then the other part is this. If you're going to do a movie with a plot like this, then it has to be good. Yeah. It can't, like, this was very thin. Yeah. It was very, like, at, at one point I found myself wondering. I was like, y'all said he was a fugitive. And this Bama just walked home, like, at one part, which... Uh, actually, dang, I'm gonna have to bleep all that out. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, the plot was very, very thin. Yes. Uh, so I don't know. I feel like me, I was watching it and I was asking, I was like, towards the third part of the movie, I was trying to stop myself from uh, scoring it too low. You know what I mean? But then I was like, I, it's not, I can't score it too high either. No. So I'm like, I, I ended up right in the middle of two and three. So I gave it a 2.5. So that's right, for me, that's right between the middle of liked it and didn't like it. Cause I'm like, I didn't hate it. I did not like it, but it wasn't quite like a three star movie you pitch right down the middle. It's like, that's fine. That's a fine movie. You know what I mean? For me, I was like, there were some parts where I was like, man, if it wasn't for Dr. Robotnik, I don't even know if I would like this movie, you know? So I, I'm with you. I, I would actually give it a two. Oh, wow. Yeah, two out of five. Oh. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I said, at the end, it was kind of better cause it was more, the payoff of seeing the fight scenes and yeah. Sonic being Sonic yeah. and being a childhood of him fighting Dr. Robotnik. But yeah. other than that, it was just, it was too much story and not yeah. enough Sonic and Eggman. And with that being said, because this is technically a children's movie, like it's nostalgic for us. I think you got to add a star to each one of our ratings for those of y'all that have kids. So, cause I think kids are going to like this. Oh, kids um, will love it. Yeah. There's a lot of like jokes and stuff that I laughed at. Like, that like I, did, I laughed at it in spite of myself. I was like, I don't want to laugh at that, but that's funny. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. so like there was a lot of those types of jokes, but I think in general, like two, I would agree with a two star, 2.5 star rating. Like it's definitely not a three star movie, but it's uh, like, do not, do not rush to the theater to see this. If you have kids, yeah, if you got time and money, sure, bring them, but don't rush to the theater to see this for nostalgia's pur purposes. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know if that's worth it. Matter of fact, I was sitting there thinking, I was like, man, they could have released this on Netflix and it probably would have done better. Probably. Like, not money wise performance, but we'll yeah. see how it does over the weekend. But yeah, uh, we are back to the car, so you know what that means. Leave it at Theater is a production of Owens Big Ron Studios. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. To find out more about this show and other Owens Big Ron Studio shows, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Owens Big Ron. That's at O H I T S B I G R O N. If you like this show, check out our sister show, Time Well Spent. I want to thank my guest, Curtis, for being with me. Thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Can't wait to do it again. Leaving the theater, we'll be back soon. See you at the movies.